Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. With Father's Day right around the corner, I thought I'd teach you a variety of simple but cute Father's Day cards that you can give away to the special men in your life. So before we get started painting, let's get our watercolor paper ready to go. Now, of course, you can make the cards however you'd like, but I'm choosing to just cut my watercolor paper into four equal parts. Then I'll paint on the front and write a special personalized message on the back. Now, I did a quick survey last weekend to see which of these cards you as the viewers would like to paint, but each of them were liked by multiple people, so I thought, why not do all three? So today I have three themes, kind of a little bit of everything, mountain, ocean, and desert. So hopefully at least one of these will fit with the men you want to give them to. So go grab your watercolor paints, water, and brushes. I have two sizes I'll be using today, a number six, and a number two round brush. And as a side note, I'll list all the supplies and colors that I'm using today in the description of this video. So I'm gonna start by doing the little rustic mountain outhouse first because that's my personal favorite. I'm gonna start by wetting down and applying some burnt umber to my palette, and then I'll mix in just a little bit of ivory black to darken that up a little bit more. Then I'll start painting the outhouse. Now I'll point out that I am not painting this in the very center of my page. The outhouse is slightly off to the left side to create some interest in my painting. I've painted a slanted line for the rooftop and now I'm painting the sides of the outhouse. And I'm just kind of curving these side lines just a little bit to add some character to this outhouse. The outhouse seems a little bit too skinny for me so I'm gonna thicken this up just a little bit more. Now I'll paint a cute little moon shape on the front here and then I'll just start filling in the space with my brown paint. But I am gonna leave some white unpainted lines or marks to give it the look of cracks or grains in the wood. Now once as the first coat of paint is dry, I'll take some more of this brown paint and my smaller number two brush and I'll start adding some lines and shadow marks to the front of the outhouse. Now I'll use some ivory black and paint in my little crescent moon. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my larger brush and now let's paint the pine trees in the background. So I'm gonna take some sap green and mix in a little bit of ivory black. Then I'll paint these pine trees by starting with the line for the trunk followed by the branches. I'm really just going to paint back and forth from side to side, making the branches asymmetrical and growing bigger as I move downward. Now after the tree is done, I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush and rub the base of the tree along with the base of the outhouse and just spread out some of this color a little bit for the ground. I think I might even add a little bit of brown color to it as well while it's still wet. Then I'll just keep painting these pine trees all across the background in different sizes and values. If you're wanting lighter values, add a little bit of extra water to your paint, or you can also use a paper towel and dab off some of the color. If you're wanting darker values, add more pigment.
Now, as a final option, you can add some words to your card. This could be a name or even just the words, Happy Father's Day. If you feel nervous about doing this part, write it with a pencil first, and then when you have it how you like, you can trace over it with a pen or marker. And this is it for this fun little rustic mountain outhouse card. Now let's move on to the next card, the Ocean Lighthouse. All right, first I've changed my water and cleaned off my palette. And then I'm going to use the same number six brush and I'll add a little bit of cadmium red to my tray. Then I'll paint a little triangle of red here on the left side of my page. And I will note that I'm not using super straight lines. These are gonna be slightly curved to help make it look a little more 3D. And in addition to helping the 3D effect, I'm going to try to keep the paint a little darker on this left side of the lighthouse. So I'm just going to dab in a little bit more red here on this side while the paint is still wet. Now using a little bit more red, I'll paint a thin line of color, again at a slight curve, about an inch or so down from the triangle. Now while we let those red areas dry completely, let's take a little bit of gamboge or another yellow color that you have and apply it to the tray. Then when your painting is completely dry, take a little bit of clean water and paint a wet spot of water in between the two red areas. Now apply some of the gamboge to the center of the water here and then use a clean damp brush to spread that color out to the edges. We want the edges to be light in value so if you need to dab some of the color with a paper towel and you can also add in more color to the center to darken that up more. Now I'm going to switch over to my number two brush and paint a tiny little circle using some ivory black right at the top of the lighthouse. And then I'll paint a thin black line of color right underneath the red line. Now let's paint the base portion for the top part of the lighthouse. Again, we're gonna use the number two brush and some ivory black. I've got slanted lines here at the sides and I'll put a curved line at the bottom that connects it all together. Then I'll just fill in that space with color and I'm gonna paint this nice and dark. Then when your yellow lighted area is completely dry, paint some thin lines over the top to represent window panes. Next, let's paint in the bottom half of the lighthouse. Now you can use a pencil first to draw some of these slanted lines as a guide, starting the lines at the top of the lighthouse and slanting them outward to the bottom of the page, or you can just go ahead and paint the lines with water and your brush. We're going to fill in this entire section with water, and then we'll start adding in some watered down ivory black. So this is more of a gray color, and we're gonna start this on the left side of the lighthouse and spread it out into the middle. Then we're gonna add some small amounts of gray to the right side and spread it to the middle. The goal here is to have both edges darker in value than the middle area, and to have the left side with a little more color than the right side. Then when you're done with that, Take a clean wet brush and spread some water at the base of the lighthouse. Then you can add in a little bit of burnt umber and maybe a touch of ivory black for the ground. Now I'm going to paint a small stripe of darker ivory black here in the middle of the lighthouse base. I've started this by painting the section with water first, then I'll add ivory black to the left side and spread it over to the right. Again, trying to keep the left side darker in value than the right side. After the entire lighthouse is dry, then I'll paint some tiny rectangle windows on the lighthouse using the number two brush and some ivory black.
And the last step to this painting is the sky background. I'm going to switch back to the larger number six brush and wet down the area for the sky using just water first. And then I'll add in some ultramarine blue and let it spread. After my sky has dried completely, I thought it might be fun to add in a few blackbirds as part of the background. And now all that's left is to add some wording to your card and we can call this done. I hope you enjoyed this lighthouse card. The last time I looked, this one was the most popular card on the little polls that I took. But we do have one more card left, the desert cactus card. Now again, I'm starting fresh with clean water and a clean palette. And for this card, let's paint the background first. So using the number six brush, take some gamboge, some cadmium orange, and some azo yellow and add that to your tray. Then rinse your brush off and using some clean water, paint some water in the left side, the corner, and the bottom of the card. Then while this is still wet, start adding in the yellows and oranges. I'm working my way from the darkest at the top to the lightest at the bottom. Now it might be fun to add some splatters to your card. So load your brush with some yellow or orange and tap the other brush to create the splatters of paint. When the background has completely dried, then we're ready to add in the cactus. So let's take some sap green and mix it with just a touch of raw sienna. Then we're going to start painting in the shape of the cactus. Now, like I said on the lighthouse card, if you need to draw the outline of the cactus with a pencil first, you can, or you can just get right into painting it. I'm also going to note that because I want this cactus to have a rough and textured look, I'm leaving some bits of white spaces as I paint. Now that the shape of the cactus is done and filled in, I'm going to go back in and add some more darker green, which is sap green mixed with some ivory black, to the left side and bottom areas of the cactus for the look of shadows. Next, let's take a tiny bit of watered down green and add that to the base of the cactus for a bit of ground. It also might be fun to add in some grassy areas next to the cactus. And for some final little details using a small brush and some green paint, add in some very thin pokey lines onto the edges of the cactus. Now all that's left is to add some wording to your card and we can call this done. Thanks for watching today. I hope you had some fun and I hope that at least one of these cards will work for you to give out to those special men in your life this Father's Day. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.